Hello and welcome again to another episode of Chem in 3. And I want to dedicate this episode to the students taking the IB Chemistry exam in a few days, the November 2018 exams. And I want to give a special shout out to Shazia Khan for sending me an email and asking me to make a video just with some tips for this November's exam. All of my tips for last year's May exam and for this year's May exam can be found on the links below this video. But of course, it's always useful to look at the last exam set by the IB, which is the May 2018 exam. Noting that the IB actually set two exams last May for time zone one and time zone two. And you should also get a hold of the examiner's report from these exams, where they will give you important tips about the errors students made and the areas for teachers and students to focus on for the future. If you would like to receive a copy of the examiner's report from last May, you can just send me an email and I'll be happy to send you a copy of this document. In today's episode, we focus specifically on standard electrode potential, the table of standard electrode potentials as it's given in the IB data booklet. I want you to note the makeup of the standard hydrogen electrode. And most students have no problem recalling the makeup of the electrode. But one area of concern is that students do not appreciate that the standard hydrogen electrode is designed in such a way that it can undergo both oxidation or reduction depending upon what it's connected to. If it's connected to copper, it would behave one way. And if it's connected to zinc, then it would behave in another way. But let's go in and take a closer look. And here you can see a typical Danieli cell or a voltaic cell, a zinc plate inside of a solution of zinc sulfate, a copper plate in a solution of copper sulfate connected by a salt bridge. To arrive at this voltage from theoretical calculations, we need to use the IB chemistry data booklet. And here we have a copy of an extract from the IB chemistry data booklet for first exams in 2016 and beyond. The standard electrode potential for zinc is given here, 0 0.76 volts. This equation is written in one direction, that direction being where zinc 2 positive accepts two electrons. Oxidation is lost and reduction is gained, so this gain of two electrons means that zinc is being reduced. Copper here also is being reduced. In fact, all of these equations flow in the direction of reduction. So the equations as written in the data booklet show standard reduction potentials. If it is that in a particular cell, something is undergoing oxidation, like in the case of zinc, then the actual value should be reversed from what is given in the data booklet. So in the case of zinc, the negative 0.76 value is the standard reduction potential. And to get its standard oxidation potential, we would change the negative sign to a positive. So here in our typical example of the voltaic cell, you note that copper is the cathode or the positive electrode and zinc the anode. Here at the positive electrode, copper ions from solution are receiving two electrons. They are being reduced from copper 2 to solid copper, and that solid copper is being deposited on this copper plate. So this value, 0 0.34 volts, should be used as given, a reduction potential. But this value for zinc as given in the data booklet shows that zinc ions are gaining two electrons. But what's happening on this plate, which is the anode or the negative electrode, is oxidation. Zinc loses electrons and becomes zinc 2 positive. So we actually need to rearrange this equation or to reverse it. And that's why the data booklet contains these reversible arrows. So reversing this equation, we would say that zinc from the plate is consumed as it forms zinc ions and loses two electrons. It is oxidized. So this is an oxidation potential. And it means that we must change the negative sign, as given in the booklet, to a positive sign. And then what we need to do is to take the sum of this reduction potential and this oxidation potential, and it would come to 1.10 volts, which is what you would measure experimentally. It's very useful to get a mental picture of the copper-zinc 
cell or this typical voltaic cell and to understand that here at the anode which is the negative electrode oxidation is taking place oxidation is loss and here at the cathode reduction is taking place reduction is gain an alternative way to arrive at the 1.10 volts is to say that you always establish the cathode as the positive electrode and what substance becomes the cathode is based on the fact that it would have a more positive reduction potential here the reduction potential of copper is positive 0.34 and zinc as it was given in the original data booklet was negative 0.76 so copper being more positive is deemed to be the better oxidizing agent and therefore it is better at carrying out oxidation which is taking away electrons from something and oxidizing it and in turn being reduced so this is how we would designate copper as the cathode and zinc as the anode and oxidation always happens at the anode so a short and quick way to directly use the values as given in the data booklet is to say that you are going to take the electrode potential at the right hand electrode of the cathode and subtract that potential at the left hand electrode or the anode leaving the values as given in the data booklet and it would leave you with an equation like this 0 0.34 minus minus 0 0.76 which again comes to 1.10 volts. So we say then that the more negative the reduction potential, the stronger the reducing agent, and the more positive the reduction potential, the stronger the oxidizing agent. And this might seem confusing, but what you have to realize is that values as given in most tables follow this standard convention designating an electrode potential in this way which is initially written as a reduction potential and you must be aware that to actually get an oxidation potential you need to reverse the equation and reverse the sign stronger reducing agents have more negative reduction potentials and stronger oxidizing agents have more negative oxidation potentials to actually get the oxidation potential it would mean looking at all of these reactions in the reverse in a particular cell one of the electrodes is going to be having reduction happening at it it would be the stronger of the two oxidizing agents like copper gaining two electrons and being reduced but at the zinc electrode things were happening in this direction as zinc lost two electrons it was oxidized. It is the stronger reducing agent. So it was oxidized as it gave up two electrons to the copper. I'd like you to stop here now and consider if you had a cell where iron was one of the electrodes. So an iron plate in a solution of an iron salt, iron two, and if you had copper as the other electrode, then what would be the standard electrode potential of that cell? Draw a full diagram label the anode, label the cathode, show the voltage, say where oxidation is happening and say where reduction is happening. Where does the information come from? To say that copper is the cathode and it has a certain standard electrode potential and zinc is the anode and it too has its own standard electrode potential. And this is where we will see the purpose of the standard hydrogen electrode which is designated as having a standard electrode potential of 0, 0.00 volts and this standard hydrogen electrode is designed in such a way that it can allow whatever other electrode is connected to it to behave either as an anode or a cathode because hydrogen gas is being pumped into it here an inert or an unreactive platinum electrode exists and this solution contains one mole per dm cube of hydrogen ions. So let's say then that the standard hydrogen cell is connected to copper. Note here that in this diagram copper is put on the right hand side of the diagram just like it was when we looked at the zinc copper cell. Copper is once again the cathode. So it means then that on this side electrons need to be sent over here and hydrogen 
needs to be losing electrons. And it can do this because there's a supply of hydrogen gas that allows this process to happen. It allows the hydrogen cell to behave as the anode as it undergoes oxidation and loses an electron. And hydrogen ions are introduced. But Cu2 plus gaining two electrons to form Cu is designated 0.34 volts. And that is how you arrive at this value. But what about in the case of zinc? Negative 0.76. Zinc would have to be placed on this side and connect in this way because zinc would become the anode and then the standard hydrogen cell would become the cathode. It would be the thing that is then gaining electrons and it can do that because it has hydrogen ions here in solution. It can gain electrons here from the platinum electrode and form hydrogen gas which would bubble out. So the standard hydrogen electrode is designed in such a way that depending upon the species that it's connected to, whether it's copper or zinc or lead or iron, it can either behave as cathode or anode. And that's why hydrogen gas at one atmosphere is supplied here. And you have a 1.0 moles per dm cube solution of hydrochloric acid to provide hydrogen ions. If zinc is connected here, then this voltage would come to negative 0.76. And that's why zinc is given the standard electrode potential of negative 0.76 and copper positive 0.34.